I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. So good evening ladies and gentlemen and uh, welcome to the November 6th, 2017 meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen. We'll start the meeting off with a uh, pledge of allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go any announcements right off the bat, and we'll, we'll have our uh, town memorial committee talk to us about the uh, upcoming uh, Veterans Day activity. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Veterans Day is on the 11th. We've had many questions about it being on the 10th because apparently the holiday is being celebrated on the 10th, but we are celebrating on the 11th. That's when the veterans want it, and we will stick with that. So we're at the middle school, uh, 11 o'clock, on 11-11. And we hope to see you all there. We have the chorus will be there, and the veterans will be there, and refreshments from the Legion. And we look forward to honoring our veterans. So we have our uh, veterans agent, Renee Kerwin. Robin Renee Crown. I don't know, you know how she likes it. Is it Robin or Lynn? You know? She read the governor's proclamation. <laughs> Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas, on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Campania by the Allied nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. After four years of conflict, and whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans, and whereas currently there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country, throughout the generations of honor, patriotism, and courage, and whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do here proclaim Saturday, November 11, 2017, to be Veterans Day, and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth to take Cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston the first day of November in the year 2017 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 241st. By His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of Commonwealth. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Walter, will you be able to say a few words? Sure. Okay. Yep. Great. I'm glad to. Thank you. I just want to say thanks to uh, um, both of you because of uh, all of the, every year. It's our pleasure. It's the same thing. It's our pleasure. It's very important. Thanks. Thank you. Good job. See you later. Don't have any other announcements, right? Um, <coughs> please be advised that this meeting is being uh, um, made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. 
Comments made in open session will be recorded. Um, we need a vote to discontinue the use of um, uh, AccuVote system and authorize use of the new digital equipment. And we have our town clerk here. Do you want to say anything about that? No, I just um, I just need a vote that where we have changed voting machines to do away with the AccuVote and now that we're on the new voting image machines. So I just need a vote of the board. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I would move to discontinue the use of the AccuVote vote and tabulating system and authorize the use of the image cast digital scan voter tabulators. There's a new one now. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I would move pursuant to general laws, chapter 54, section 34, that the board confirm that it's September 19, 2016 and October 3rd, 2016 votes to authorize inclusion on the warrant for the October 18th, 2016 special town meeting of a transfer of free cash for the purpose of purchasing new voting equipment. Clarify that such vote was intended to authorize and direct the town clerk to purchase and utilize new voting equipment, specifically called image cast at future elections and to discontinue use of AccuVote voting equipment at all such future elections and further to direct the town clerk to provide the state elections division with notice of this vote. Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and, and, uh, discussion on the municipal uh, program. We have uh, an aggregation. Uh, Ed, do you get some information? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry that we're missing the uh, two members of the board, but I guess I'll go ahead with my presentation and uh, I'll have a separate meeting with uh, those two gentlemen at a future notice. So I just want to explain the, the municipal aggregation program that was voted on by town meeting some time ago and you've had a presentation in front of you by Colonial Power. Uh, Nick Sakella went on um, have been part of uh, conference calls with Colonial Power and the other communities that are in a national grid program, as well as the conference call included two communities that are in the Eversource um, district, which is the, um, which would be Kingston and, and uh, the town of Plymouth. So anyway, so in your packet, um, there's a, a, a section that's devoted to the aggregation program and I have a, a cover memo that deals with all the exhibits and I want to run through these exhibits uh, in the order that they're on the um, a memorandum that deals with the exhibits. So the first uh, exhibit is a typical electric bill and we're using my electric bill from Plymouth uh, as an example of how the program works. Now, if you look at that, the, uh, the first exhibit, the Eversource bill, you'll see that the bill itself is divided into two parts. You have, and this will be in the right column, it says total charges for electricity. And you see supplier charges, and you see delivery charges. The municipal aggregation program deals strictly with the supplier charge. And that's the only one that's going to be affected. <clears throat> so, um, now, we're going to look at a, a typical electric bill and how the savings is going to take place. And I got 
the kilowatt uh, uh, usage per month, you know, from my electric bill as, a, as an example. Now, the next exhibit is a chart that is furnished by Colonial Power to deal with the fluctuation of rates. National Grid and Eversource in this area are allowed <clears throat> to change their rates every six months from November to April and April to October. And these, this chart shows the fluctuation of rates every six months. And you can see, especially the last several years, there have been some serious spikes um, to, you know, 0.16 kilowatt hours uh, all the way down to 0 0.80, back up, and, you know, up and down, up and down. And the aggregation program is supposed to uh, mitigate that by having the same rate for any period of time. <clears throat> the next exhibit is a, a similar chart dealing with the rates. Just, and this was done by Casey in our office. The chart down at the bottom just shows how much rates go up and down every six months. So, uh, any questions at this point? So they've gone as high in one section, 96.60%? Yeah, almost double. Right. Wow. For a six months period. And then it goes down. 50%, 40%, 50%, whatever, and back up again, so. Now, the next exhibit <coughs> is a chart that is furnished by Colonial Power when it comes time for the town to make the decision as to whether they want to join the program. <coughs> and this would have been the final uh, fixed price for the town of Pembroke, and there were bidders, Constellation Energy, Nextra, Public Power, and Verdi. Now, if you look up in the upper right-hand corner, under basic service, you see the rate that a national grid is going to charge Pembroke for the next six months is 0.1263. 12673, one, two, excuse me. All right, that's what we in Pepper are going to be charged for the next six months. Now, what I have underlined is what Nick and I, you know, were thinking would have been the best rate had we opt into the program. And that would have been a one-year deal from this November to the end of October 2018. And that rate for one year would have been an extra at 0.10877, okay? So hypothetically, if we had joined the program and we picked that rate for that amount of time, that's what we would have recommended to the Board of Selectmen. Now, let's go to the next exhibit, which is a chart showing my electric usage for one year, and I have total electric in my condo, so everything that I have is all electric. Heating, air conditioning, utilities, you know, stove, the whole enchilada. So, so for the first six months from May until October, this is my kilowatt usage and times the rate that Pembroke had for the first six months. I'm using Pembroke, I'm using my electric usage for Pembroke rates. So <clears throat> that would have been for the first six months, Pembroke people were paying 09432. And for the supplier cost for that six months, my cost would have been three hundred dollars. Now, starting November first, people in Pembroke are paying that higher rate now at 0.12673. And based on last year's winter usage by me, that would have been over $1,700 that I would have spent in supplier costs. 
So for the year, total uh, kilowatt hours used for a 12 month period, I would have paid over $2,000 in supplier costs, all right? Now, if we choose to go with the municipal aggregation program, we're gonna have the same rate for the 12 month period, that 0 0.10877. And if we use my electric usage for each of the six months period, the first six months, because the rate was lower, I would have paid $46 more for the six month period. For the second six month period, with the higher rate, and we keep the uh, colonial power rate the same at 0.10877, I would have saved $244 for that six month period. So for the entire year, I would have saved a little under two hundred dollars for the twelve month period, but that's how it, that's how it works. Any questions there? Are they all the same? Oh, all of these companies are the same? Is that how they go? Well, no. We would have picked the best deal. You know, Nick and I would have come to you with that chart <coughs> that was first by Cronin Power, and we said this is the best deal that we would recommend for a one year period uh, at this flat rate. And, and this is what you would say. And so, you know, I would urge you guys to go home and look at your electric bills and see the same methodology, just to see how it would work. May I make a comment on that? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did look at my bill. And uh, if I use uh, the 0.10877 rate, which is on this proposal. Uh, I just happened to uh, have a contract with another company uh, moving away from National Grid. And there's a slight difference in the rate that I'm going to pay for the next year. It's a one-year deal mm -hmm. for me. And if I use the same number of kilowatt hours and compare the rate that I currently have versus the proposed rate of 0.10877, I would only save 10 cents a month. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I'm in the program that I'm in for one year, I would not be interested in this. But when the year is up, I would be interested. Mm -hmm. And I know I can uh, join at any time. So I would not sign up, but only because it's not financially the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Because if I opt out early of the plan that I have, I pay a uh, fee for doing sure. it. So there's no point in doing it. But that's an excellent rate, the one that mm -hmm. is being proposed. Right. So now let me show you how it actually works if a, if a community decides to join the uh, a plan. So the first thing everybody gets is you get an envelope, which is the exhibit after the, my, uh, the uh, chart regarding you know, my electric rate. So you get an envelope. So we send all our bills to you. <laughs> yeah, good idea. So you get an envelope that looks like this because Plymouth opted into the program. And so everybody in Plymouth, every resident got an envelope. And this is what the envelope looks like. You know, it says official town business and da 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 da. Then in it. Oh, that's my original? Okay. Then. In that envelope, you get this two-page letter, this eight and a half by 14 letter that explains the program. All right? And then in that letter, in that envelope, you get another envelope, self-addressed envelope, with a card. Now, I don't have those two examples because 
I set my card in. So for everybody in Plymouth, if you didn't want to be part of the program, you had to send your card in. If you didn't send your card in, you're automatically in the program. Whether you know it or not. <laughs> or likely not. But not Pembroke. It'll be that way for Pembroke if that <coughs> was the plan. If, if you folks chose, that's why I'm explaining all this to you, because you know, now that I've gone through the drill twice, you know, cloning your power, and have gone through the drill myself personally at Plymouth, that's exactly what would happen. So just the last time we spoke of this, we it was mentioned that we needed to opt in. So no, not the case. exactly. That, it's exactly make that clear for everybody. Right. So that's the thing that you know we have a couple of employees that live in Plymouth that work here. They didn't send their card in. They're in a the program. So now we're going to track their electric bills. See how it works. I sent my card in and opted out. I was just curious. And then the other folks didn't send theirs in, you know, because people would be confused about getting that letter and the information that was in there, not knowing that you're automatically in if you don't send that self-addressed envelope to New Orleans is where, where I had to send it, you know. And that's what that would be the case. So so that's how it works. That's how that plan works. Now, if, you, if you're in Plymouth or any other community that's in, and you've already, you, either you sent your card in and opted out, or you didn't send it in and you're automatically in, you can go on the website, and in this case, it's www.colonialpower.com. And it would be, if we ended up in the program, it would be Colonial Power slash Pembroke. And you can go online, and the last exhibit that I have is an online form in which you can opt in or out. And you can opt in anytime, you can opt out anytime. There's probably about a month or so lag, so you would probably be in the program for a couple of months or out of the program for a couple months if you decide to opt in or out. So that's pretty much how the plan works. I know Mr. Matthewson is a resident of Plymouth. Did you opt in or out? In. There you go. So he's in the program. Because I'm Scott. Scott. So huh? Because I'm a Scott. And <laughs> <laughs> I cost less. So okay. anyway, that's how the program works. And, I, and like I said, having gone through the drill the last couple of months uh, on behalf of the board, uh, Nick Jr. and I, um, I wanted to take this time to explain for 10, 15 minutes what we've learned about the plan and, and I can explain the plan in English. Um, I'm sure that um, after you look over all these rates from all these other you know, people that are selling, selling the electricity or whatever, you're going to pick the cheapest over the longest period of time. I, I would imagine that's what you're going to do. But how does the public know that? So how would how would I know that? Because this gives me this gives me the rate that they're offering, and I know what rate I have from my electric company. So how do we how do I know what all of those other ones are? Is there something that comes to everybody so they know that you picked the right one? No, no, no. It only goes to the municipality. Well, yeah, I mean, what happened is, you know, we were on a conference call with, you know, 10 other towns. And Plymouth and Kingston were on that same conference call, although they had Eversource and we had National Grid. I, I thought when we were done with the conference call that Plymouth wasn't going to join the program at that time. And then all of a sudden, little I know, about a month later, they're in the program. You know, and I'm supposed to, you know, I'm trying to stay abreast of what's going on in the place where I live and the place that I work for. And next thing you know, I, get, I got this envelope in the mail with this information. You know, fortunately, I knew what it was all about. You know, so I made what I considered, a, you know, a, an intelligent decision. But if you weren't paying attention or didn't know the program, you'd probably pitch the thing. 
So I'm also assuming that <coughs> that uh, the more towns that join it, the less great you're probably going to get. Well, y yes and no. Um, you know, and and uh, Nick had another commitment tonight, and what we've learned is that in, in a lot of instances, it's almost better to be on your own than it is to be with other towns. It, there wasn't safety in numbers. I mean, they, you, you would look, they would give you two charts. They would give you one that included all the towns that would be in National Grid that were part of this go-around, or they would give you a chart that would just be Pembroke by itself. And a lot of times it was almost better. I mean, in the case of Kingston and Plymouth, it was better that Plymouth got a better rate by themselves than they would have if they had Kingston with them. It's just the way it worked out. That's the question I have. Plymouth's rate is less than what they're quoting Pembroke. Mm -hmm. What what goes into that? Why why can't we get that rate? It has to do with whether or not you know a the company itself and whether or not there's going to be a charge. And I can't remember what the charge is going to be. I think it's. Um, It's not a transmission charge. There was another charge that may may come down the pike in six months, and I'll and I'll and I'll get that for you. But there was something that you know that it's not all apples and apples. You know, it depends on your company itself and and who else you're in with. <coughs> and you're right. Yeah, uh, evidently, you know, Plymouth saw that rate and they jumped on. So this is something that we need either you or somebody here to always be looking at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, and but I, you know, now that you know, Nick and I got a really good handle on how the thing works and the fact that I've seen it up, you know, firsthand now by getting the thing in the mail and and, and talking with, you know, other folks that, uh, you know, opted in or opted out. Um, you know, we're going to pay attention to their electric bills as they get it because. Uh, you know, um, I think uh, one of our employees is, you know, going to get a couple of old bills and, and track it, see how it goes. You know, I was able to just use my own, my bill and, and uh, do the comparison, so. Is there a reason that you are, um, you have such a large differential, almost $200 a year, and you're all electric, and Lou is 10 cents a month or a dollar 20 a year, I only spend it all in one place. But um, is it because he doesn't have a large electric bill to start with? No, he's yes. got a third, he's got a third party supplier. And you guys have gotten robocalls, I'm sure, at home, dealing with somebody trying to sell you an electric rate. I know I've gotten a couple yeah. at home, and, and I'm sure you've gotten them too. And, and Lou jumped on it and, and got a rate um, yeah, that's I think the other thing too, uh, Arthur, between my bill and Ed's, Ed is all electric, including heat. Right. So his kilowatt hour usage is higher than mine because I pay a separate bill for gas. So my kilowatts use is 400 kilowatts a month, mm -hmm. which is not a lot. And, and that's why I suggest you, you look at your electric bill because your electric bill will show 12 months worth of history and you can do the math and, and figure out what, you know, what you're going to do. And, you know, if it looks like it's a good deal. The one, like I said, the one thing that is different about the way is that you're automatically in unless you opt out. So. And I think Dan's question about that should we decide to go with this program town-wide is going to be a major issue for this board to figure out how we're going to explain this to the public right. even if it's just that one point <laughs> uh, that when you get this in the mail what you have to do with it because you're automatically in if you throw it in the wastebasket well <clears throat> the thing is we have had numerous discussions and this is a town meeting vote. This is not a board of selectmen's vote to, to implement the program. Uh, the program is in place through town meeting vote. 
It's just when we pull the trigger on a certain rate, for right. instance, is in this board's purview. Um, but one of the things, though, I, as far as communication that I think uh, we started to allude to that I, I expand on, is a lot of people use electronic billing and, and don't get sure. paper, paper bills anymore. So if they do get uh, a letter from, from the, the utility, uh, they, they might tend to ignore it. So, you know, this is not a bill, this is something on the front. And, and that's right, and, and the person that I talked to, uh, that I've been talking to, um, she pays her bill electronically. <clears throat> so, but you can go online and get a copy of your bill, you know, and so that's what she's going to do. But, you know, we'll track her bill to see how that operates. So, um, but yeah, I would suggest you just look, get one of your own bills. Um, you know, you may use more electricity than I do. I mean, even though I'm all electric, but I'm one person in there, you know. So, you what's, may, what's you, the date we need a decision on this? Oh, no. This is a moving target. We can do it anytime. Okay, so it's not a, 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 a date certain that we have to, nope. have to choose. No. No, we've already, Nick and I have already been uh, two situations where we could have come to you folks. One was back in July, another one was at the end of September. And we both didn't think that we were ready to give you guys a recommendation. And by then, we really got a good handle on how the whole thing operates and can explain to the general public how the, how the system operates. So, but we, anytime, anytime. You know, all I got to do is call Colonial Power and say, hey, can you get us some new rates? Can we start that off with municipal and do that first? We already have, a, we we, already have Nick and I already have a contract with Constellation Energy, and we got like an eight, you know, ours is like 0.8 something. It's really low. And we got a three-year deal. That, but that's just from municipal facilities. Okay. Okay. Definitely something to think about mm -hmm. before we notifying the public. Also, uh, well, I'll keep you know yeah, I'll keep you guys posted now because you know we'll be <coughs> dealing with Colonial Power, and we will have conference calls in which we will get one of these guys every time. And if, you know, if I want to give you a, an update every month about what the rate could be, be happy to do that. Okay. Sounds good. Um, anybody else have any other questions on that? Hearing none, then we'll go on to uh, the discussion of the mission composition and number of members for the capital building on the study committee. And I would assume that you're going to take that over here. Well, this here was, this was put on today from, uh, from the town administrator, I believe. Did you ask for, for a clarification on this, to put it on the warrant? Is that where that came from? It just needs to be clarified so we can recruit. It doesn't have to be yeah. this week. It can just be for the discussion or, keep, you know, push to another week. Can't recruit until you know how many, that's all. Okay, well, that discussion. Would, um, what I would like to see is uh, information from the town accountant, especially, who he believes will be most uh, beneficial on this, on that committee. Uh, of course, your input, Ed, is always uh, expected and needed. And as far as the board of selectmen, uh, we've all talked to people around town. Uh, you know that there are people interested in, in joining this, uh, yeah, members of the advisory committee, a uh, member of the DPW has expressed that uh, interest. So um, what other member of the school committee, uh, even though they're not directly uh, part of these particular uh, building projects, but um, if we form a committee, the school committee is uh, such a large portion of the town's budget uh, that they should be represented as well. So if we have a committee of, um, uh, to put a number on it, seven people, I think that's a good starting target. 
and you know if we need to expand a little bit we could <coughs> uh, but I wouldn't want to begin with anyone any more than seven unless you folks have a different idea I think I would agree on seven and I think the list that you just went through uh, would be uh, a good representative uh, group of people. Um, I didn't know whether we would need any one from planning or the assessors. Or <clears throat> but I would, I would see every major every major board and committee, especially the ones within town hall, uh, should have a say in this. Everyone, everyone's input, whether you're on the committee or not, is always welcome and can be put to use. So I just want to have a good representative uh, representation of everyone that, that uh, will be affected by this. And also I want the people that, that are willing and able to, to make a contribution in, as far as the financial aspect of this. And that, that's what this is. We've already done the need studies. We're just trying to find ways to uh, get funding for it, other than uh, a straight proposition two and a half override. We want to supplement uh, a direct taxpayer burden where we can, and, and that's what that's what this will be. This will be a round. Uh, I see it starting off as a round table of, uh, of ideas, and then uh, maybe solidifying in the next month or two into uh, solid proposals. For, for town meeting. Yeah, I would agree because uh, if, if you accepted your suggestion of who's going to be on it and we agreed on that every time you have a meeting that does not preclude anyone else from coming and if they had good ideas I'm sure we're going to want to hear from them. Absolutely. So I think uh, yeah, I would, I would I would agree, Dan. I think that's I think that's a good representation. So I have six here that we've talked about, and um, so we need one other to make the seven. We have police, fire, DBW, advisory, selectmen, and the school. So the planning board and planning. So that would be seven. Yeah, you know the board. No matter what department you leave out, somebody's going to be happy. Yeah, well, seven, and it could creep up to nine, but uh, but I think uh, once the committee's formed, if there's if there's uh, uh, people knocking at the door wanting to join the committee, that's a good thing as long as we keep it manageable. Um, I would say no more than nine if, uh, if if we get if we get the interest. But we keep it at seven so that we won't have trouble getting a quorum like we've, we've done with other committees, too. So it's a good place to start. So can I make a suggestion that we do the seven that you put on there with two alternates? And we don't know who those two alternates could be. You could actually pick them once you get the seven. So if we leave two alternates open, there'd be two openings for Two of the groups that you may say, hey, you know what? I think we we could use an alternate from this department, or we could use an alternate from someplace else. So. That's an excellent idea, Bill. That way, they're, they're there, and, and we'll know that if someone is an alternate and shows up for <coughs> meetings, then you know maybe we could expand the board and, and give them a seat at the table. Well, if somebody else doesn't make it, the alternate could fill in for a vote or, or get into that discussion with them. Right, and and um, if, if we leave it as the, the departments can choose their representative, right. uh, either a vote of the board or committee or the, the choice of the chairman, uh, I think that's a good way to do it. No, but, um, yeah, I can't really make a motion, but if I did, I was able to make Would you like me to read? Would you I, would, I would say that, that we would have one number from police, one from fire, one from DPW, one from advisory, one from the selectman, one from the school, one from the planning board, and two alternates to be determined. I would suggest somebody from the community center committee. All right, so that could be under the 
the world did not mm, They're going to have more of a say because, yeah, they, I would, I would think that they're going to come before the board and eventually the town meeting with a proposal for this community center. So maybe in, you know, instead of the planning work. I mean, from a staff standpoint, you know, Mr. Buckley and myself and Kathleen and Kathy Sen will be available as far as research or, you know, non-voting staff people. I mean, so that, you know, we don't have to worry about that part. So you should just make the committee nine? Well, I, I wouldn't want to exclude the community center committee. So we've already named, we've already named The ninth could be a member of the general public. Sure, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Have we had anyone express interest uh, to no, town? Some folks have wanted more information. So that's why this is very helpful. Okay. okay. I mean, we don't have a mission statement other than the the, the broad brush of what we're trying to accomplish. So maybe you gave some great language earlier when we were talking. We'll take it and run with it. All right, thank you. So, <clears throat> so I'll make a motion to create a nine-member committee. Uh, members to be seated from uh, the police department, <coughs> the fire department, the DPW, the uh, the Planning Department, Board of Selectmen, School Committee, Advisory Committee, I forgot to say them, uh, Community Center Study Committee, and one general member of the public. And that's my motion. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? So we have the numbers. Um, and is there any discussion at all about the mission of what the board is going to do? I think if um, it's been alluded to a moment ago, if you can take the discussion that we've had here today and consolidate it and boil it down to a, a draft. Yep. I appreciate that. Thank you, Sabrina. Okay. Sounds good. So we would address that at another meeting. Hopefully next week. Yeah. Right. Right. We do. We need interest. We need. Right. We need the, po the, the folks who want to join. Yep. Um, that's really. That's really where the focus needs to be. With those people talking about the real issues. You're gonna have to get cranking because it is November. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. And then you have holidays, so you're gonna have short weeks and all that. So. Yeah. We'll make. We'll have a. Mission statement for you. We'll, try and, uh, we'll solicit at least, um, you know, representatives from those uh, people that you uh, suggested that uh, be part of the committee now. Right, and you know, one of the good things is during these need studies for the police, fire, and DPW, those folks have been looking at these ideas and, and thinking about it already. So uh, bringing bringing them together with uh, some, some fresh ideas from uh, advisory, town accountants. Um, I think we can hit the ground running with, with thoughts that have already been had and information that's already been gathered, but we just need to gather more. Sounds good. That's good. Um, we need to have a vote to accept the minutes of October 30th. To Mr. Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board accept the selectmen's minutes of October 30th, 2017, as written. Second. Any questions or comments? Any none? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Any old business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I had uh, two items I wanted to ask. One is um, we briefly covered the community center and uh, if we have a committee and who's on the committee and what's going on with the committee we haven't 
had an update. I think you're planning on having one next Monday night. Excellent. Thank you for that fast <laughs> action, Mr. Thorne. Uh, my second question, I guess I will address to the town administrator as well. Um, can we have a, an update on the solar farm? Absolutely. You want it now? If you have one now. <laughs> yes. uh, we don't have a target date for when they connect to the grid. But I'll see if I can get um, uh, Mr. Dressinger, who's our contact person with Onyx, to see if he can firm up a date when they'll be connected to the grid. Now, I have to admit that I don't have any knowledge on what's involved with connecting to the grid. But it seems like we've been waiting for that to happen for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the reason why I bring it up. Um, we'd all like to uh, have that solar farm active. And uh, I don't really know why it can't be. Thank you. If you could find out any more information, I'd mm -hmm. appreciate that. Anybody else have anything else? I think the old news, it's just a day old, but it's news nonetheless. Um, the folks along Water Street in the North River, the neighborhood group that's opposing the 40B, had a meeting yesterday that uh, Sabrina and I attended, and, um, and Charlie attended it as well. And they're still very um, deeply committed to opposition to the 40B project as have been the town. And they were uh, very complimentary towards the town's efforts to, uh, you know, show that um, in 2005 it was declared as an unfit site for a 40B and nothing has changed except there's perhaps more traffic. And um, we believe that um, it should be uh, considered not a, um, a good site for a 40B some 12 years later. So they are fundraising. They have an attorney, um, Dennis Murphy, who is um, a very good and capable attorney and a 40B specialist. And we're going to be um, in it, I think, that it's uh, for the long run to um, oppose any uh, development. In the if I wasn't out of time, I would have made it myself. Yeah, it, it was um, held at the Chapman's house, which is a beautiful yard that looks out over the North River. It would be a shame to have a condo separating them from uh, their view. Yeah, I think the, the, the whole board of selectmen. Uh, share your opinion and the, the neighborhoods. Um, we need to fight this for the from that area. The development is not suitable um, for that street, for that area, for that habitat. Yeah, I'd just like to add uh, for anyone who's watching that the uh, town has put together a very extensive uh, report that was sent uh, to the Housing Authority with all of the uh, arguments why that this project would be detrimental to the neighborhood and to the town. A very strong, comprehensive report. And we have not heard back yet. So hopefully uh, we will and they will see the merit of what was represented in that report. Very good. I do have uh, one thing that I just wanted to bring to the attention uh, of the board, and I made copies of uh, the information that I received. Um, back on the first part of October, I think I advised the board, we sent a letter to uh, Blockton, which we have never heard back from. Um, but um, just recently, um, last week, I was at a, uh, at a Heron uh, Commissioner's meeting uh, annual meeting in um, Sandwich, Mass, which uh, all the wardens and 
the people from the Division of Marine Fisheries and NOAA and all the rest of the people from offshore that do watch the offshore ships and all the rest of the stuff were all present down there. It was, it was a uh, full day long um, meeting from 9 o'clock in the morning right till 3.30 in the afternoon where, where we went on a, uh, a walking field trip to, to observe all of the heron runs and stuff that they have down in, uh, in Sandwich. It was, it was pretty good. Um, also, um, they made a report there that um, um, the only river stream that beat Pembroke this year was the Charles River, which is a huge system up in Boston. There was three towns out of the whole state that had an increase in fish this year, and the rest of the state went down. Um, so they were quite concerned about that, but they were also very happy that Pembroke was, was one of the towns that we went up in. And to beat Weymouth, not to say to beat them, but um, it all depends on how many fish, you know, come up or whatever, but to have more fish than Weymouth had in their run this year is, is really great. And we talked out at 300 and something thousand fish this year. Um, where I believe Kingston probably has like seven or 8,000. So they don't have as a big a system as we do, that, that's for sure. But in any event, our, our um, amount of fish that came up was just um, astronomical from what it, it's been in the past. It's, uh, and they took out the counter that counts the fish before the last run of fish came up. And we're guesstimating that 50 or 60,000 more fish came up after they pulled it down. Um, so that's, that's quite a, a big amount of fish that came up. That's the good part of it. The bad part of it is that Brockton hasn't, hasn't taken care of their dam situation down there where they divert water from Pembroke Furnace Bond to Silver Lake. And we've been after them for the last five years to, to fix that. So much so that some of our own guys went out and bought nets and put it across the fishway down there so that the fish wouldn't get um, entrapped in there uh, during the, the migration uh, in the fall with a little fish. Um, we can only think that the bigger fish are going to go out the natural way and not towards the flume, but we don't know how they get in there, but um, in the first part of October, we received information. Um, I actually got a, got a um, message from the Division of Marine Fisheries indicating that there was a fish kill in Silver Lake, um, and they were sending um, uh, people from the Division of Marine Fisheries down to Silver Lake to investigate it. Um, I do have the investigative report that's here, a uh, copy of it, and I also have a copy of the email that was sent from uh, Alex Manfield, who is, he is the uh, uh, Ecology Program Director for the Jones River Watershed, which backs up the Silver Lake. Um, and just to, just to read this quick thing, it says, uh, Hi Pembroke and North River uh, Advocate, some of you probably know about this already, but just in case that you don't, several thousand river, river herring were recently found dead in Silver Lake. Brockton's DM and overuse of the water prevent herring from getting into Silver Lake from the Jones River. This means that the dead fish are yours, um, i.e. we were diverted over from Furnace Pond. The, the amount of work you have all been doing, putting into the fisheries, restoration at Pembroke and the whole North River system has been truly remarkable. It's really heartbreaking to see this um, absolutely unnecessary destruction of fish. Our watersheds uh, are linked in really unfortunate ways and see the attached Division of Marine Fisheries describing the incident. And, um, and I do have a copy here that and I'll give uh, Sabrina so she can post it on her website or whatever. But uh, it indicates that um, 
that they were either juvenile or um, last year's juvenile fish they got trapped in. Um, and there was over 2,000 fish. They said approximately 2,500 uh, fish that were uh, up on the banks that evidently got caught there um, from the water lowering. So it, it, it appeared that they were trying to head towards the Jones River for an exit. Um, and then the water, they, they draw the water down so low and so late that um, evidently they got trapped in that area down there and weren't able to make it out. So, uh, so they died. But that just goes to show that that these fish are going there from Pembroke. Um, and also, if, um, if they're not diverting during the times that we're watching everything down there, I, I just can't understand how they get there because the juvenile fish, we put the nets across to make sure that the juveniles don't go in there because Brockton refuses to do it. I understand that, that there's some discussion out there now, but nobody from Brockton has either got a hold of the Division of Marine Fisheries or Pembroke Fisheries to talk about anything to do with, uh, with uh, helping the matter out down there. So, And it is kind of disheartening that, um, that the guys do a lot of work in order to bring the fish back, and then they just go right through that tube in the Silver Lake, and that seems that's the end of it. They never come back. So um, I don't know whether another letter is in is uh, is going to help because they haven't they haven't answered the last one, and I don't I don't know where to go from here. I'll call town council and talk to town council about taking a um, a stand against them and going to court and. Um, they're still looking into that, I guess. So it's, it's, uh, it's something that I think that we should do in the future because um, otherwise than that, it's, it's uh, Division of Marine Fisheries has been trying to do this for the last five years and they're not getting anywhere with Brockton. So just to bring you up to date on that. Is there anything that a town administrator has for the report? Just one thing, I want to reiterate that we had the recycling center open on Saturdays and Sundays through the month of November. Um, Mr. Villani reported to me today that Saturday, there was uh, just a sh uh, shade under 300 cars that visited the recycling center. Uh, probably uh, less than a third of that on Sunday. So I just want to let everybody, <coughs> the public know that the recycling center is open on both Saturday and Sunday the month of November. Awesome. Do we have anything to ask us, Lightman? Any new business? And then there's some upcoming issues. There's going to be on November 13th, there's a public hearing uh, with the Board of Assessors on the fiscal year 18 tax classification hearing. November 20th is a class one, class two taxi, precious metals, metals license renewals. December 4th will be um, common picture license renewals. There's 46 of them that we have to approve. December 11th, there's 30 liquor licenses, 11 live entertainment, five Sunday and amusement device and five license renewals. <coughs> On December 11th, um, set the selectman winter break schedule. On December 18th, there will be a discussion of the selectman on the 2018 calendar and <coughs> we determine a quarterly meeting with the advisory committee. And is there a need to go into the executive session? Yes, sir, I'll take you. Um, seconds. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board go into executive session under Mass General Laws, Chapter 38, <coughs> Section 21, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, ask me, DPW unit. Amendment 1 to the Memorandum of Agreement. Second. 
And the chair does the uh, Yes. 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 And I'll do it. So that will uh, conclude uh, tonight's meeting on November 6th. And uh, we're going into executive session and we'll be coming back out, but there will be no need for a vote after we come out, so we'll only be coming out to adjourn from the selective meeting. So uh, have a good week and uh, we'll catch you next week and uh, thanks for listening.